Hey everyone, Alyssa Reynolds here. Really, really, really excited as ever. Especially to be popping on over here in the wonderful intuitive angel messages. And channeling the goddess Maka today. So <laughs> I am sure a number of you are probably wondering who is the goddess Maka? <laughs> so I will be getting to that just as I'm waiting for all of you wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people to pop on in. I just wanted to have a quick chat about some of the things that are happening in my little sphere. So I finally updated my website. So that's up and running. <laughs> can find that at arreynolds.com and you can also find me doing other channelings live over on my group the amethyst cave and this saturday i'm going to be channeling the elves i am super excited about that one too i always tell myself i need to find a better word than excited because it's honestly my <laughs> state of existence. <laughs> so that's what's happening over in the Amethyst Cave and also it is just all about the elementals and the fairies over in my group at the moment because the fairies guided me to take this course that I was running back in May with Ashley Cunningham and boil it down to just one day. And so that is the Fairy and Elementals class, which some of you probably have seen around about already. And it's very similar to the course in that I will be channeling guidance and messages for each of the students from the fairies or any other beings who step forward. And there'll be live Q&A and also opportunities to just get to know these different beings and feel their energy so that after the class you can tune into when they come into your space or when you've called them in and then you know oh yep it is the fairies who are hanging out <laughs> on my knees and they're distracting me right now while I'm doing work <laughs> and keeping the vibe high because that's what they honestly do best so that's happening on Saturday November 2nd and it is $40 USD for the class. The class will be two hours minimum, potentially more, depending on what beings show up and how many students we've got. And so if you're interested in feeling pulled to learn a little bit more about your personal connection with the fairies and the fairy realm, or you just want to create a new connection or just deepen it, you can check it out over on my website, arreynolds.com, or you can check it out here on Facebook in my business page, AR Reynolds. It's just under events, and it's also over in the Amethyst Cave. So <laughs> now that there's a number of you popping on, and hello to all of you, it's so wonderful to see everyone here this evening. I'm going to dive back to that question that I opened this live with, which was just who in the world is the goddess Maka? <laughs> and as I say that, I start getting, I don't know if any of you ever um, watched it because I think it was a TV show, though I used to play the old CD-ROM game of where in the world is Carmen San Diego. Anyway, I just had that little jingle pop into my head when I said that. <laughs> Who is she? She is an Irish goddess and she isn't that well known, which is why I'm really, really excited to be channeling her tonight because she has so much to offer, just as, well, just about any being does that is out there. But she's got a bit of a special place in my heart, mostly because I have spent many, many years studying a lot of mythology and folklore, both for university and just for fun. <laughs> and 
she, like many of the Irish goddesses and just Irish mythology in general, is very, very complex and doesn't necessarily have one way of defining her. She's most often grouped in with her two sisters, Bav and Neman, or Neman, sorry, and they're known collectively as the Morrigan, so they each take on the title of the Morrigan. That tends to be the most common um, identification for her, but if you go search her up on Wikipedia and then you dive in through there to all the other sites, there are so many stories out there about her, and she takes on many, many different, well, faces, really. <laughs> and as I've been talking about her here, <laughs> she's popped in already, and she is almost as fiery as Callie. Not quite. Callie is on a totally different level. <laughs> Maka has her own fieriness, and as I was talking about her here, she had her sword out, and she was leaning forward on her sword, <laughs> so had the point in the ground, leaning forward on it, and she's got really, really big, fiery, fiery red hair that is very, very wild. <laughs> and she had a little bit of a swagger to her shoulders. <laughs> Speaking of her, and she's saying now, <laughs> I wish to step forward now, <laughs> she says, <laughs> and I have my own introductions to make and to give to all of you so that all of you know of me going forward from this point for <laughs> things have turned. And now, of all the roles that I have played, and I have played many, many roles throughout your account of your human histories, now I am beginning to take on a new role, a role that is suited for the light that is anchored here and is here to stay and to grow and grow and grow. So that is why now I am stepping forward to connect with all of you and show all of you who I am now and outside of those many stories that have been told and have been written about me for the times and the vibrations that were needed. For sometimes I was needed to be gentle, to be a mother goddess, to encourage fertility and love. And other times, I was a wife, and a support, and a guide. And then yet more times, many, many more times, especially in your account of more recent times, I have been a goddess of war, a goddess who stood alone and independent. But those are just some of the roles that I have taken. And now, I also wish to speak upon the roles that each of you take on as I am taking on a new role. A role of that which is to inspire each of you to embrace your inner fire, your inner flame, and be that flame. Here, regardless of those and 
that which is outside of you. Be bright and don't just shine. Let yourself burn bright for the brighter you burn, the more vibrant you burn, the more you allow yourself to step forward and step out, to step up, to reach out a hand, you will create a warmth that is bright and is more than just being a light. You will, by your existence in this moment, in this incarnation that you have now, you will add to the light and you will warm a place and an environment for others to step forward and to add to that warmth and increase the warmth and to make this earth not just a place to incarnate, but a home for this time, a home that you are on now. And as it is a home, cherish this home, love this home by letting your inner fire burn bright and burn warm. So, she says, and she's taking a pause now. I ask you to think upon this question. What role do you play? What role do you play? What role do you play in this moment? At this specific moment, what role do you play? That is one part of what will be your inner fire. It is a spark. I ask you too to think upon what role have you played and what role will you play? What role are you moving toward? These two when you have sat and picked up the answer, these are sparks as well that will add to your inner flame. For all of you have played many roles through many, many lifetimes. And even within this lifetime, you have played many roles and you are playing many roles. And in that, each of those roles are your flame. They make up who you are. You do not have to focus upon ones that you may no longer wish to play for there are many that we have played and that are no longer needed or no longer desired but acknowledging them and cherishing them even for what they taught you and how they built you to the moment that you are in right now, that makes them just as important 
in lighting that inner fire. So go with them and tune into what roles you have played, what roles you are playing, and what roles you will be playing. She's taking another pause again. She's standing up now. And she says, now, upon the subject of roles, I wish to delve deeper into one field that I have often supported many in, and that is on standing your ground and setting boundaries. And in this, know that boundaries are what help your flame to be bright, to be warm, and to flame. They are what aids in defining each of your roles and is important as you continue to make step after step in your life and allowing your flame to be bright for in order to offer your light to others, in order to be bright, to be warm, to give love to others, look to your own inner flame first. And two, when you have looked to your inner flame, look around you and acknowledge what is around you and who is around you and how those play with your inner flame. Herein is where roles are played. For sometimes there is a role that others play that is there to challenge you and to help you to look to yourself to allow your flame to be bright and to know that you matter and that your warmth, your light is needed here. And others, in other times, your own roles, maybe in how you interact or react to those around you. And knowing how and when to step forward or to focus within. That is all that boundaries are. First, and foremost of all, when I speak on boundaries, they are simply there for you to love yourself first and to let your own fire shine bright and warm. And know that if you need support in identifying where your boundaries are, or when to place the boundaries, or what to do to build your own fire, you may call upon me, but know <laughs> that what I always say and what I will say 
to many of you, you may ask, <laughs> and I will say now to all of you, <laughs> all you have to do to build your flame is to focus on what brings you great passion. What lights a fire in yourself? And this fire is also part of that inner fire. It is the fire that keeps you stepping forward. What are those things that keep you stepping forward, that keep you moving each and every day that you walk upon the realm of the earth? What keeps you going? Focus on that. For when you focus on your passions, you are then kindling the fire within you and keeping it going so that when it comes to a moment when another is in need of your warmth, of your fire, you have fire and warmth to give so that they may take on your fire and your warmth and allow theirs to grow and then they too can pass it on. But first, focus upon your passions. Focus upon what lights your fire. I have a third thing, she says. that she wishes to speak upon. She says, this third thing that I wish to speak upon is to acknowledge also that in this moment and in this time that there is no more need for a dichotomy. There is no more need for two sides. There is no more need for just a left and just a right, just an up and just a down. For that is only what has been needed in your pasts for this 3D reality. And now, this is being moved beyond. Begin to think not in twos, not in opposites, not in a need for a two to balance, but in and all to balance in a sideways <laughs> and a leftways and a rightways and in other ways in many ways that all come together to create a one and this too is part of why I step forward now to encourage all of you to acknowledge every role that you have played, you are playing, and you will be playing, or that you desire to play. For you are one of an all, and the all is of a one. Know within yourself that you have everything that you need.
and she says, to that I wish to add, stepping forward, being a bright flame, does not mean that you must be like me. <laughs> and she, oh, she <laughs> lifted up her sword. <laughs> it does not mean you need to be like me. For swords are not always what is needed. And stepping forward does not mean you must be front and center. You do not need to be the loudest, for there is no loudest. Each of you is just as you need to be in every moment. Be that. And if you can be whoever you are, in whatever moment, that is all you have to be. And in doing that, you are a warrior. And I acknowledge you each as warriors. Each of you is a warrior for simply being who you are and letting your inner fire burn with all the passions that you hold within you. Let that inner light shine. And as you do, all will begin to shine bright flaming and warm around you. Thank you, dear ones. She says. She's doing a little bow, pointing her sword out. <laughs> and she says now, if any of you wish to ask of me any question, I am here. Okay. Thank you, Maka. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Ooh. Wow. So, <laughs> any of you do have any questions and I'm just gonna turn my attention over to my laptop here <laughs> to catch up Whew, that was a wild ride <laughs> don't know about all of, all of you but that was quite a wild ride wonderful though <laughs> Ooh, Sandra that is a fantastic question so She's asking, what does Maka's energy feel like when I channel her? And like I was saying at the beginning, she does have a similar fieriness to Callie, but in more of a controlled way, almost like if you were to contain the fire within like an iron sword. <laughs> That's the image she's just popped into my head. <laughs> so containing like a fire within an iron sword is very much kind of the feeling. So that very controlled, steady, strong, but passionate sort of feeling to her. And in my body, as I channel her, she's really, really strong in my heart chakra. <laughs> really strong in there. Burning almost. So that's where she does feel very similar to Callie, because Callie always goes straight into my heart chakra as well. 
and just washes me over with just all of her energy to the point where I feel very, very hot all over. <laughs> awesome question there, Sandra. Okay, and so on the questions as well, more specific they can be, so I know you've probably all heard this from Krista many times, um, the more specific the answers will be. And I'm going to be going just where I am being guided by the goddess Maka. Um, so if I don't get to your question, I will try to get to it at a later point, but I may not during this live. Mm. Okay, so Katya. Yeah. So Katya is asking here Can I find a part time job while studying, or will it affect my studies? And what type of job around me should I look for? That's a fantastic, very specific question, Katya. Mock is a great energy for that. <laughs> So she's just laughing, Katya, and she says, you have great strength within you. Strength that is waiting to be uncovered if you allow yourself to stretch yourself, to go where you are uncomfortable. Step into those discomfort spaces. For in those places that are not yet comfortable, know that they are only not yet comfortable. And they will become comfortable if you desire to do so. If you feel pulled toward taking on more work, more challenges, then do so. This is part of listening to your inner passion, your inner flame, and follow it. Follow the passions. And do not let discomfort or worry be in your space, for they do not need to be in your space. For you have great fire within you. Each of you do. <laughs> Just talking to all of you now too. <laughs> Remember this and follow where you are pulled. <laughs> so Katya, I hope that helped because that was just inspiring me a little bit there too. It's always a good reminder. <laughs> to go where our passions are. Okay. Dorota, so immediately for you and your curiosity about where to go, Mark is saying, Dorota, you have come here in this moment and in this time because you are working now on kindling that fire within you. That is what your focus should be at this time. Focus upon all that brings you joy. And it does not have to be something you spend all your hours with. Just focus upon each day one thing that brings you joy. And each day, this 
will bring more spark to that inner fire within you so that you have strength going forward. <laughs> it's a good one for everyone too. <laughs> I just have some awesome questions tonight. <laughs> mm. Oh, Lilia, um, what books specifically? Is that part of a question you were asking? If it was, if you could just repeat the question down below. I'm a bit of a book nerd, <laughs> so I don't know if you were asking specifically about different books where you can find some of those many stories that humans have told about the goddess Maka over all of history so far. Or there's also many oral storytellers as well. But yeah, just let me do, know down in the comments if that was around your question. Oh. <laughs> So, so yeah, that's a good question. How do I keep my fire lit and remain high vibrational at work? As it can be a challenging work environment. Ooh, I feel you there. I'm sure many people do, honestly. <laughs> Sometimes even just going out to a cafe can be <laughs> like, what am I doing out here around all these other people? And you just kind of want to turtle in and not be around them. <laughs> So, Marco says, to your question, Lisa, <laughs> whether you are at work or out of your home, this is where having boundaries is important. This is where knowing who you are, what your inner fire is, and being confident in that inner fire is important. For when you have turned your gaze within to that inner fire, to all that you are passionate about, to all that defines who you are and who you want to be and who you are growing into, when you focus upon that, <clears throat> you will create boundaries around yourself, your space, and wherever you are. That is just extending your energy so that others feel only your bright light. And if your bright light does not match with their own vibration, they will not remain in your space. And if there is one who is testing your boundaries, if there are many who test your boundaries anywhere, at any time, and any moment, hold steady with who you are and remain a bright light no matter how they act or react. For your own vibration is yours alone to hold. It is your inner fire. That is your high vibration. And that is why I encourage all of you and you, Lisa, to focus upon it and only it, turning your gaze to yourself. And when your fire is bright and you focus inward to who you are and you stand your ground, 
then all other vibrations fall away. For you are so bright and that is all you must do. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Another awesome question there. <laughs> Just reading your questions. Brilliant. <laughs> Dorothy, um, is that a question you're asking there? If it is a question, you can just repeat it down below. So Liz is asking how she can help. How can she hear you, Mako? She's just gotten down, she's crouching down now, and she's got her sword down in the ground. And this is like her means business <laughs> position. Oh, she means business to you, Liz. <laughs> so, she says, Liz, all you ever have to do is call upon me by name and I will be there and I will support you in brightening the inner flames of others and in brightening your own flame so that you can step forward and help more. All you have to do is simply call my name. <laughs> and I will be happy to work with you and all those who you come in contact with. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, Liz. So you've got the goddess Maka on your side too. <laughs> well, we all do. We all do, honestly, and <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> Can she move in too? <laughs> <Yee -hee. laughs> so she just stood up with that, pointed her sword out. <laughs> she said, of course I can. Simply call upon me, call me in. I will be your bodyguard. Oh, <laughs> wow, nice. <laughs> awesome. So if any of you want to call her in too. <laughs> yeah. And she's saying now too, I can help you keep boundaries and find your boundaries. So call upon me whenever you need support. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ooh, I'm more. Yes, <laughs> you are here for a reason. Because mm. Maka has just said, each of you. <laughs> She's so expressive with her sword. It's <laughs> that so cool of it. She's like pointing her sword out to all of you like this. And she says, <clears throat> to each of you who is here, you are here because what you all can focus upon more of in this moment <laughs> is your inner fire. 
if you feel lost, if you feel confused, if you feel like you have too many hats and you have played too many roles, or you are playing too many roles, and you stand in this moment in feelings of being more than you wish to be at this time, or pulled in many directions, You have now acknowledged those feelings, and now it is time to turn within. It is time to focus upon what makes you passionate. Or more, she says, <laughs> she's now got her sword up again, she's pointing it. Focus upon what brought you joy, for that is what you need to bring back in your life. What brought you joy? For you, it is rediscovering the joys that you have buried in your explorations and trying on many things and going to many places. You no longer need to be exploring and trying things on. Go back to the child within. And there you may begin to find what brings you light, what brings you joy. There you can begin to spark your inner flame. That's so sweet. Even though it's <laughs> delivered so strongly. <laughs> oh, I just said that. She said, I am not sweet. I am strong. I am direct. And I am strength. <laughs> oh. Okay. Noted. <laughs> oh. She's got some good humor on it. <laughs> ah, Dorothy. <laughs> so, this right away, Maka is saying that you cannot make anything happen by obsessing upon it and focusing upon it with a drive. <laughs> I've just put this image in my head of like hammering a nail really really hard into the ground. <laughs> the way she says now to bring something into being, to allow something to happen, is to allow it. And you know this. Simply step back and allow yourself to just be. Do not push for Stepping forward on the path of awakening, 
stepping forward on your paths that are growing before you will happen. But they can happen faster if you allow yourself to just sit back and rest within yourself. <laughs> just now got this other image in my head of just sitting back and like putting your hands over a warm fire. <laughs> and she says to that, allow yourself time to rest. Rest is what you need. In resting, you will find your inner fire will begin to grow and you will feel its warmth and your path will open faster and faster the more you let yourself rest. Mm. Ah, ooh, that's a good question, Jennifer. I'm curious about that one too. <laughs> that ma Maka says, <laughs> I work with all, especially women. And your daughter, <laughs> she says, is becoming a bright little woman. She is a strong little woman and she too must learn to sit back and to celebrate what she has accomplished and to acknowledge it for she has done much for her small years. <laughs> she too will find all will come easier the more she allows herself to rest and simply have fun to laugh and still be the child that she is. She has much ahead of her yet still. <laughs> For now, she can focus upon having fun, and being the bright light that she is. <laughs> and I can come in and support her and help her with finding that joy again and cherishing that joy inside of her and being the child that she is, if she so wishes to call upon me. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Aww. Mm. That's fantastic to know. So. Mm. All right, <laughs> Elizabeth, ooh. Okay. So I'm gonna just see for her. Ah, <laughs> so she says right away <laughs> that for you, Elizabeth, you came here tonight too, she says, to rekindle your fire for you give much to others and it is time for you to focus upon 
yourself. And I can come and help you with setting boundaries so that you can have space and time to rekindle your inner passions. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a really, really good one, Amor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Love that one too. You guys have amazing questions tonight. <laughs> I know I've said that already, but amazing questions that are great ones that I'm getting so much from and I hope many of you are also getting so much from as well. <laughs> it's wonderful. So. So, Marcus says, in some of my roles, I have been a mother. And so, I know what it is, she says, to see all of you. <clears throat> and to be at the other end of no longer focusing just on one's own energy, but that of so many others. And so, whether you are a mother or you are a teacher, or you are a giver, a healer, a friend, a sister, a brother, a father. A doctor, a fighter. Whatever you are, and whatever you most identify with, There is a child in you who is not just the child that you were in this lifetime or the child that you were in any other lifetime. It is the seed of your soul. It is the seed from which your light grows. And in that, do not just focus upon who you may have been as a child or what you may have loved and been passionate about as a child, but take the role that you are now Take the roles that you may be now. And turn to each of them as if they were their own separate form in your mind. And thank them. Invite them into a home in your mind, sit them down and thank them. Thank each one of them. Thank each role that you have played. And in this too, you will also find your different ages. You may have your child self, your teenage self, your young adult self come in and thank those two for those were roles that you played. Thank your role as a mother, as a daughter, as a father. Thank those roles. And 
as you think them, send them love. Send each of them love, especially the one that is your child self. And do this often. All of you. For this is a way to step beyond roles that you may no longer wish to hold or roles that you're wishing to reconnect with like that of the inner child that is within you. For they are just as real within you as any other soul in human form is without your own embodiment. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> and so I'm more to that as well because I've done a lot of work um, with my own inner, inner child as well over the years. That was a big thing for me. And I can say personally that, and what I meant to say there and <laughs> is, there is a great YouTube um, video, which I'll put down at the bottom of this live actually, that I found was really, really helpful. And it was very similar to kind of that idea that Maka was talking about of engaging with the different roles of yourself. But this one was directed by a gentleman known as Dr. Hugh Lem, and I found it definitely quite helpful. And I also found it really helpful to write letters to my inner child. Um, I'm big on writing and journaling, so I found just writing to that self and saying whatever I felt toward it or about it or just doing a lot of forgiveness toward that inner child as well. But if you're not big on writing, you can certainly set up your phone and you can record yourself just talking or you can just be sitting down anywhere and just talk out loud to your inner child. I found um, doing that as well was really, really helpful. Oh, uh, Paul, you know, that's the question that I am always, always, always asking. <laughs> I'm always asking that too. So Paul, for those of you who maybe haven't seen his comment there, is asking, how can I be more productive? Or do I need to be more productive? <laughs> and I'm just going to say straight from my own experience because I hear it all the time from every angle. <laughs> whenever I've asked any being this, <laughs> that spirit never, ever, ever wants us to be more productive. They don't. I've never, ever heard spirit say, Alyssa, you're not working hard enough. You're not putting in enough effort. You're not doing enough work. You're not doing enough. I've never heard them say that, never. And in fact, in times when I have put in too much effort and pushed myself too hard, then, well, I had some really drastic ways <laughs> that I was then forced not to. For example, <laughs> sorry, laughing a little bit at myself here, and also my guardian angels just <laughs> pulling his eyes at me too, but, um, I pushed myself too hard with running and practicing piano and I was at university at the same time and I was writing a novel, I was doing all this stuff all at once and through some various different happenstances, <laughs> what I later found out, spirit had guided all this stuff to happen. I ended up injuring my knee really bad, I ended up injuring my wrist right side froze up and I got really sick too and so I couldn't 
run, couldn't walk, couldn't play piano, couldn't even write, move my hand practically. <laughs> and it was all because Spirit was like, hey, Alyssa, you're working too hard. You're pushing too much. You need to chill out. <laughs> so I was forced to chill out <laughs> and couldn't do anything for six months other than just peel myself. <laughs> So, Paul, really, to that um, question of yours, what you're doing right now is certainly more than enough, and <laughs> yeah, what I'm actually now getting from your team is <laughs> just lots of applause. So, you're doing totally fine, and that's a good reminder for everyone, too that yeah, you never have to push yourself too hard. If you do push yourself too hard, you might end up like me, <laughs> you end up injuring yourself in multiple ways, and then you can't do anything. <laughs> and then you just get to rest, and it's wonderful. And then you realize that resting is actually one of the best things to do, and it's awesome. <laughs> it's honestly so much more enjoyable. Just, yeah resting, relaxing, and knowing that spirit's got it. <laughs> and they'll let us know when we need to make a step in a particular direction. <laughs> so, <clears throat> that, I'm going to see if Maka has any other words. She says, Nope. <laughs> You've said it. You all have this, <laughs> she says. <laughs> so, with that, thank you all for joining me, and thank you, Maka, for your amazing words tonight. And I will see all of you another time. I'll be over channeling the elves in my group, the Amethyst Cave, on Saturday. And I will actually be channeling a number of other goddesses coming up here for the next couple of weeks. I'm doing a bit of a focus on the goddesses over here while I'm focusing a lot on the elementals over in my group. <laughs> so <clears throat> with that, have a wonderful rest of your day or your evening. Much love and blessings to you all, and good night.